Good, good. Bring him along. I don't know what we're bringing him along for, but bring him along. It's only a matter of time before. Hold the phone. Stop the presses. Oh, she's doing the thing, man. <laughs> My man Tenzin. All right, The Legend of Korra, episode three. The first two episodes have been really good. We've been introduced to Marco and Bolin, who I'm getting the vibe of are going to be mainstay characters in the show. At least for a while, we'll see. And the thing I was surprised about is that we got introduced to Amon, right? Who seems to be the antagonist for the season in episode one and nothing about him in episode two. So I've got a feeling we might pay more attention to that in the coming episodes. Maybe see what's going on with this whole Bender's versus non-bender situation because I really like the direction we have with Korra as a character right now with what she's dealing with trying to learn airbending and struggling with the spiritual side of things so I'd like to see a little bit more of the plot and the antagonist side of things start to develop now too and I don't know if it's going to be as massive of a thing as you know uh, Sozin's Comet Ozai and the whole war was because that was a very worldwide situation and obvious threat to everyone but who knows maybe this Bender's versus non-bender situation and with you know technology and society advancing maybe this could become a pretty big deal as well and last thing I mentioned in the previous video that I was thinking about doing maybe two episodes per video some people mentioned to me that down the track there are a few like two-part episodes just like in the last airbender so I'll combine those for sure but let me know in the comments and I'll probably do a poll on the channel page as well about whether I should do two episodes per video or just stick to one like and subscribe check out the patreon for early access and uncut watch along versions of all these reactions to Cora if you're interested and with all that being said Enjoy the video. Chapter 3, The Revelation. Let's get it. What's the big idea with making me train this early in the morning? The morning is evil. Hey, she right. She right. Deal with it. You deal with it. <laughs> oh, these two are going to be fun, man. They're going to be fun. First, you owe me for the Avatar's new gear. Gym and equipment rentals for last month. Right, okay. Okay. What? What I'm has he got, man? Boy. It's like a, a, a fox One raccoon? Fire ferrets need to ante up 30,000 yuans for the championship pot. 30,000 yuans? Yeah, you can see the situation they're in. I reckon Cora's gonna get them out of this somehow. It wouldn't happen to have a secret Avatar bank account overflowing with gold, would you? I got nothing. Oh, there is some soccer in this guy, isn't there? I've always had people taking care of me. Well, then I wouldn't mm. say that nothing. Yeah, okay, I'm, I'm seeing the, yeah, yeah. Ever since we lost our parents, we've been on our own. I'm so sorry. That's tragic, but not a situation I wasn't expecting. We need serious ideas. I was serious. Sorry, I'm just obsessed with Pabu. I want to, uh, like, he's the Momo. Right. Oh, is that, was that Zuko? Oh, man. When I see statues, to me, it just means they're dead, man. I mean, I assumed, but I had hope. Ta-da! Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. One of my favorite things about the last airbender was like Sokka and Momo had a like a little connection with each other. That's what this reminds me of. Hey, Bolin, is that you? Is this the same guy? Lightning Bolt Zolt is looking to hire some extra muscle. Oh, well, this is very well timed, isn't it? Mako told me to stay away from the triple threats. Yeah, the triple threats. Yeah. Your brother ain't the boss of you. <gasps> <gasps> <laughs> Ooh. Oh, hello? Wait. Oh, I love that all the other types of bending are just common things now. Is this Marco? Okay, Marco does lightning bend. Everyone's lightning bending. This is awesome. Bolin? You here, bro? Dude, I love this attic, man. I'm not gonna lie. Mm. I bet the little love bird is making a house call. Oh. <laughs> and look at this shot. Looks great. Good, light on your feet. Oh, uh, here we go, Cora. Oh, she's moving now. Ooh, he's cute. <laughs> Cora, is that the handsome firebender boy that drives you crazy? Does he drive you crazy in a bad way? Or does he drive you crazy like you like him? The kids are the best. Hey, yo! Hey, Mako. You seen Bolin? Nice to see you too. I could uh help you look for him. Nah, I got it. Hey, cool guy. Let me help you. We can take Naga. Yeah, good, good, good. You can see Marco, you know, really wants to do things on his own. And I'm sure he's probably used to it. Dude, look at this. Z I can't with the Zuko statue. You guys seen my brother around here today? Perhaps. My memory is a little... <laughs> oh my fun. god, these kids are hustlers. Shady Shin showed up and flashed some serious cash. Boat took off with him in his hot rod. In his hot rod. The red monsoons, the Agni Kais. 
all the triads are muscling up for oh, something real big. Oh, interesting. Well, that's all you're getting at The me. agony Kai's, I love that. These are like all like gangs. That's probably a strong word, but that's what I'm getting from that. Why would Bolin get tangled up with- Whoa. Oh, it's, it's, it's him. Pabu? That's Pabu. Oh, it's like a ferret. Homies? Yeah, good, 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 good. We gotta hurt. Gives Appa and Momo energy. I love it. We better be cautious. <laughs> oh, something going on here. Bowl in? You in here? I wonder if this was a trap. No, okay. Oh, oh, this looks like um, Amon, his group maybe. We're chasing people through big cities like this. It's such a different vibe. Oh, yeah. Okay, right, these guys are, they mean business. And look at this camera work. Oh, that's tragic. Hmm. Okay. Reminds me of Ty Lee. Yeah. Th these kind of moves, though, remind me of Zuko. Okay, Naga. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes. The motorbikes and everything, what a different vibe. Mm. Oh, I can't bend. It is exactly like Ty Lee. Calm down, it'll wear off. Those guys were chi blockers. Yeah. They're Amon's henchmen. Amon, there it is. Uh, that would make a lot of sense. Anti-bending techniques for the, you know, people who don't like benders. We are going to save your brother. I promise you that. Hmm. Mako is an interesting character. Obviously, they've been through some shit. But once again, as they did in the last Embedded, there's a lot of room for character growth early with these guys. <laughs> oh, I love it. I ran into an Equalist protester over there. And you think they'll know where Bolin is? It's our only lead right now. So why is Bolin running around with a triple threat triad anyway? Yeah, here we go. She doesn't know. Yeah. We used to do some work for them back in the day. What? Just to what? get Are by. Kind no, of no, no, no. No, we were orphans out on the street. I did what I had to do to survive yeah, yeah. and protect my little brother. I'm sorry. It must have been really hard. Good, good. Can I ask what happened to your parents? They were mugged by a firebender. He cut them down right in front of me. Jesus. I was eight. Bolin's the only family I have left. And if anything happened to him... It... That's pretty brutal, Matt. What's going on here? Oh, look at these two. Now. Now. Here we go. It's time. So he has the same like beard style as like the Fire Nation, right? Back in the day. Shut your yapper and listen up. Yapper. My friend got kidnapped by some chi blockers. Where'd they take him? I have no idea what you're talking Looks about. Looks like Zhao. Oh, I... <laughs> oh, here we go. Dude, I love that poster of Amon, I'm not gonna lie. They make it look really cool. Witness the revelation tonight, nine o'clock. What's this revelation? Oh, this... Nothing that concerns This the might be beauty. something. I immediately went to AOT, Declaration of War. I am very interested in this. Why didn't the Equalists put a location on these? Probably because they don't want just anyone waltzing into their big revelation. I bet the information is hidden on here. Yeah, somewhere. that's what I'm saying. The backs. There's four different images. Oh, it's a big map? Bingo. That must be where it's going down. I'm like nervous and excited and I don't know, man. What's gonna happen here? What are you doing? We'll attract less attention this way. True, true though. No one gets in without an invitation. You mean this? Here we go. The revelation is upon us, my brother and sister. I like his voice actor. This could be very I interesting. Knew a lot of people hated Benders. Oh boy. So okay. Place. This is why I said in episode one, I didn't know how big of a thing this was, but uh, I think they're gonna put Ladies some emphasis on that here. Your hero, Amon! 
Ooh, that's his main man in the back. I see him. He's got the swords. My quest for equality began many years ago. My family and I lived on a small farm. We weren't rich, and none of us were benders. Yep. This made us very easy targets for the firebender who extorted my father. That firebender took my family from me. Hmm. He took my face. I mean, I think I see what they're doing here. I've been behind a mask ever since. Similarities to Marco and Zuko, the obviously. The Avatar has recently arrived in Republic City. Dude, how did it get she like this, though? that bending brings balance to the world. But she is wrong. It has been the cause of every war in every era. Mm. But that is about to change. Are they going to, like, bring out some benders? The spirits have acted as guardians of our world. And they have spoken to me. They say the Avatar has failed humanity. Where's That's the proof? Show me the receipts. They have granted me a power that will make equality a reality. The power. Oh to take my a god, this is what I thought he was gonna say. Permanently. That's impossible. There's no. No, way. it's not impossible. But like, now how could this guy do it? I mean, they, they, they had the li there was a lion turtle on one of the cars, right? In episode one. We need to be smart about this. Then come up with a game plan, team captain. I will give Zolt the chance to fight to keep his bed. It's like an Agni Kai. You're gonna regret doing that, pal. <laughs> <laughs> yep, lightning bending's just common as hell now. Jesus. And it wasn't nearly as epic as when Aang did it to Ozai, but it looked like he did the thing, man. What did you do to me? Your firebending is gone. Forever. I've, I've got so many questions, man. I'm gonna make some theories up about this. A new era of equality has begun! Wow. They're powered by water and steam. If you create some cover, I can grab Olin without anyone good, seeing. Good, good. Then we duck out of here. Works for me. Mako, good luck. You too. Nice, good, 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 good. Come on. It's not enough. Bend it! Part of me thinks this might actually happen. Okay, no, I think we're good. I think we're good. Here we go, Marco. Bowling, you all right? Yes, Marco! I love you! <laughs> Bro, and this reminds me of Zorn, man. I get so many arcane vibes from this show. I love it. Oh, this is the guy. Now, I imagine he's not a bender, but I don't know. Like, if he's in this group. Yeah, he's got like a power pack on or something. Oh, that's gonna hurt. Now, now, can we redirect it? The lightning. No, no, it's not like that. Ugh. There's no place in the world for you anymore. Here we go, this Cora. I wouldn't count us out just yet. Uh. Naga! <laughs> 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 okay, he is soccer. Let her go. She's the perfect messenger to tell the city of my power. <sighs> how how did we get here, man? How did this happen? I was just about to send out a search party. Are you all right? And we gotta tell Tenzin what's going on, though. This is a big deal. I was at an Equalist rally. I saw Amon. What? He can take people's bending away. Now does Tenzin know? That's impossible. That Aang did this, though. Only the yeah. Avatar has ever possessed that ability. But I saw him do it. I don't, don't know wait. How has achieved Maybe he's power. not done it. Maybe with his chi blocking, he's made it look like he has. Mm. Dude, that was 
That's exactly what I wanted from this episode, man. I was like, give me more of a mind. Let me see what's going on. Oh, that is so interesting. All right, so you can understand when I say the only thing I want to talk about is this whole, you, you know, equalist Amon situation. But I'll quickly draw attention to some of the character stuff before that. So currently, it seems Marco has significantly more depth to his character than Bolin does. And I guess now that I look back at it, I, I guess Katara had more depth than Sokka did as well. Again, I'm not necessarily trying to compare. It's just the fact that Bolin and Sokka are very similar characters. So they lost their parents. And Marco said when he was eight, someone did comment all their ages for me. And I love that our characters here are a little bit older than our main characters were in The Last Airbender. So Bolin's a couple years younger, right? But that's tragic that Marco like saw that happen in front of him. But like I said during the episode, it's not a situation that really surprised me given the fact that, you know, they were living in the attic of the arena. But of course, the guy who's running the, the tournament, you know, he's just, you know, exploiting them for money. Of course, Bolin gets caught up in this situation you know they throw a bit of money at him he's jumped right into it and you can see how badly Marco wants to get Bolin back lots of emphasis on how much Marco really cares for Bolin that's his only family you know and you can see how for most of their lives they've had to do things by themselves and Marco sees himself as the protective one he has to protect his younger sibling so he's used to doing things by himself that's why he was reluctant to have Cora come along but I'm glad that Cora was persistent and made sure she went along you can already see like these two are going to have a great dynamic they're already setting them up to have a little bit of a thing with each other develop potentially. Dude, Tenzin's kids, uh, they, they they might just carry the show. I hope they're in the show like like the whole way through. Like they, they are killing it. Okay, so there's two schools of thought here. There is, can Amon actually take bending away from people for good? Or like I was saying at the end of the episode, is he just potentially making it look like he can to get his message across? So for argument's sake, let's say he can do it. How would he have gotten to this? It seems to be common knowledge that Aang took Ozai's fire bending away. I, I wouldn't imagine how that wouldn't be common knowledge. Obviously, Tenzin knows about it because he is Aang's son, but emphasis on the fact that Aang's been the only one to do it. So then it's like, okay, how in the world would this guy of all people, you know, he's saying, you know, the spirits have spoken to him and given him this power. You know, we saw that lion turtle symbol, but that was on a, a triple threat triad car, right? I don't know if that links to Amon at all. I don't think it does, considering they just kidnapped a bunch of them. And the other connection I was making in the moment is that when um, Amon was talking about uh, like his, uh, let me find exactly what he says something about his parents and a firebender it reminded me exactly of Marco's situation as well okay he says the firebender who extorted his father and then his father confronted him and the firebender took his family and took his face and he's got the mask on so you know it's believable like you can imagine his face is probably burnt but but this is like what I'm saying with the spirit stuff man like where are the receipts did this actually happen is this all just a front but then like what's his actual motive but also um when you think of uh people losing faces you think of Ko right but I don't know if that applies to the situation but I was thinking about when he said um, the spirits have spoken to me. I was like, man, I reckon the only spirit that's speaking to him is Ko. And that's a big part of me. I think I just want Ko to come back in the show because I think Ko was so cool so creepy but a really cool concept that all might be nothing though this is just where my head's going but through all of that you can see why Amon is doing this right he lost his family to a bender and obviously there are a lot of people and this is only in Republic City we're not even talking about the whole world that feel the same way against benders right I imagine the more society advanced the more there was a class division and look it is what it is that's just what happens in the world it's such a shame but, but it's just what happens and there's a nice contrast between you know the avatar is meant to bring balance to the world by mastering you know all of the elements but Amon is saying I'm trying to bring in a new balance where no one can bend. This is the syndrome stuff from, from The Incredibles. If everyone's super, like no one will be. But it's like the opposite of that, right? Like if there are no benders, you know, then they don't have this class division. But, but here's the thing with, with humanity, man. They'll just find something else. There'll be some other sort of class division. But the fact that Amon, like he seems to have a pretty significant following and situation going on here. So like, how did he get to this point? It's all really interesting to think about. But, but this is what I love when shows do this early. They give you so much to think about, so many questions. So now on the other hand, let's say, like I was saying, he's using the chi blocking. Lots of emphasis on that in this episode, which I really like. And I love the nod to just how common metal bending, lightning bending, now chi blocking is. All of these things that were very niche in the last airbender, only a select few people were doing them. They're just such common things now. I think that's really cool. And there were a few more nods to um, how sheltered Korra's been, right? Like it didn't seem like she had any knowledge of chi blocking. She was very shook when it happened to her, but Marco was like, now nah, it'll wear off. This is just 
the thing that happens. And also when she was saying to the brothers, you know, she always had people looking out for her and she was taken care of. Came across in a bad way. She didn't mean it like that. You can see they've really kept her away. And I think there's a lot more to that that I'm sure will become clear later on about why Aang wanted it this way. We'll see, we'll see. It's just more things to think about. But um, so the three guys that Amon potentially performed the bending removal on. I imagine, I, I might go back and watch the first fight. I imagine the reason he says they have a chance to fight is so he can perform the chi blocking potentially. Let me look at that because this could debunk the whole theory if he doesn't even do any of that. It's not like he hits him an awful amount, man. He does grab him a little bit, but it was not nearly as apparent as when those other guys on the motorbikes were taking a core bending away. I don't know, we'll stay open-minded, but if that's all he's done, he's blocked these three guys' chi to make it look like he's taken their bending away. You know, he's shown all these people that he can do this thing. And now core is under the impression that he can take people's bending away. Now that she's told Tenzin, this is just gonna, you know, go everywhere, I imagine, this news, which is exactly what Amon wants. And here's the thing. In episode one, Amon was saying, okay, so the Avatar's here, like, already. I think we're gonna have to speed things up. Something like that. Maybe he knew Korra would find a way to be here, and this is exactly what he wanted. Maybe even as far as, like, getting Bolin here. Like, like maybe it was all planned, man. Because Amon did say, you know, if the Avatar was here, she would say it's all about balance, this, that, and the other. Al almost like he was potentially potentially insinuating that he wanted Cora to be there. I don't know. I really could be reading too much into this, but like, it's a lot of fun. I'm not going to lie. And then he could just like, you know, dispose of these three benders or lock them up or something. And then people would never see them and never know that he was only pretending to take their bending away. So interesting. But this is where I wanted to be. Now we have a really solid direction and, and plot. Like the antagonist is well established now. This is what we got to stop. We got to stop Amon potentially trying to take everyone's bending away. Crazy stuff, man. Cra th that was an epic episode. I'm so happy with that but i think with that i'm gonna leave this one here i really don't know where we're gonna go from here i think there's just gonna be so many questions hanging over the show for a while while core and tens and everyone else figures out what's going on i'm so keen to get amon's backstory man i want to see like this is like obviously it's way too early to even think about saying it's giving the zuko type of backstory stuff but like it really could be just in terms of how juicy it could be very interesting but i'm gonna leave this one here now thank you all so much for watching if you enjoyed please leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more and as always please Please continue to leave your comments and feedback down below. You know, I always appreciate it. And we'll see you all in the next episode of The Legend of Korra.